Hey guys, welcome to UPSC 360. So in today's class, we are going to discuss this next topic of geomorphology in which we'll be discussing upon the factors which are controlling the landform development, right? In previous class, we have already read about what landform is. So landform is basically the natural feature which we actually observe on the solid surface of the earth and different other planetary bodies. In uh, major, uh, if macroscopically, what we actually observe the landform uh, in our earth is either planes, plateaus or mountains so these are the second order landform but there are many third orders landform as well like valleys like peninsula like canyons and if we observe the same landform in uh, oceanic bodies then the second order landforms are uh, continental shelves continental slopes right then the third order landforms are sea mounts then canyons so these are different kind of landforms which we observe on land as well as on over the ocean and these are formed by the complex interaction of different processes like endogenetic processes exogenetic processes the nature of the rock the involvement of various biotic communities so these are the different things which we have discussed in the previous chapter right link to which it is given in the description below right now in this class we'll be focusing upon the approaches to the land study of landform see basically there are two approaches Approaches. The first one is geographical or descriptive approach, which is a bit of uh, going against the logic and uh, reasons. But the second one is logical and scientific approach on which we will be mainly focusing upon. Because uh, through this approach, uh, we actually, uh, you know, read about the internal and the external energy which actually acts and which actually results in formation of different landforms. So, right, let's focus upon the factors controlling the landform development. So, uh, over Overall, holistically, there are seven factors which mainly controls the landform development. The first one is climate, the second one is mineral composition, the third one is structure, process, relief, time, energy, right? So these are the factors which actually controls the landform development. Let's focus upon one by one. So the first one is climate here, right? So how does climate affect the landform development? See, climate, what is climate? Climate is a summation of weather of a region right and what is the weather of a particular region uh, weather uh, is the summation of uh, you know the humidity right the rainfall all right the you know the sun intense solar intensity of a region the uh, degree of hotness the degree of coolness so these everything combines weather right so what happens is uh, climate is the summation of weather and climate ultimately affect the rate of weathering of a particular lo location right say for example if in a particular area there is warm climate there is moist, moist climate right so in that kind of region the chemical weathering will be more it's quite obvious right and that's why that's why the erosional process will also be more right and that's why the rocks of that particular region ha you know happens to be like this thing right in which there is a chemical erosion happening on these kind of rocks right but if we uh, take the other way around if the region is uh, you know a bit of colder uh, region right so in those kind of region different other kind of landforms we actually observe like like see this is the thing this is the top of the mountain this is a picture is from right what happens is in colder region there occurs frost action right what happens during the uh, you know daytime there is heat and during the night time it's damn to freezing cold right so in in colder time the what happens is there is freezing which happens in these kind of rocks right and in uh, the very hot times what happens is thawing like like say for example this is a rock right if it's hot time so what will happen is the rock will expand it will kind of expand right now it is a bit expand again it cools again it expand again it's cool again it expands right so there occurs crack in it and after that the water enters here because during the colder time there occurs freezing right so inside waters enters now what happens is Again, you know, there happens uh, to be a hotter uh, time, right? In which it again thaws, means again it expands. Again, when it cools, again it becomes, you know, freezes. It becomes water, right? Sorry, it becomes ice. So, continuous freezing, continuous thawing leads to frost action, which leads to breaking of these kinds of rocks, right? So, indirectly, weather is only the main cause of, you know, breaking of these kind of rocks. 
right so these are basically the two types of actually uh, you know landforms which we actually observe either in the hotter climate or in the colder climate which happens due to the climate so climate is also one of the major factor of controlling of landform development the next factor comes here is mineral composition now what does mineral composition how does it affect it see basically what happens is there are different rock, rock mineral means rocks are made up of different mineral either that mineral may be you know water soluble or that mineral may be not water soluble like say for example limestone which is a water soluble mineral right and there is a quartz which is not affected by chemical weathering right so these both kind of rocks have different physical different chemical properties that's why there occurs different kind of landforms in the place where there is more sort of landform there we are going to see different other kind of landform right but uh, because this is water soluble right so the landforms will of course be different than this uh, quartz i mean th than the area where the there is more dominance of quartz like material right so that's why mineral composition also plays one of the major role right the third major uh, you know uh, factor is structure of a particular region see what happens is if there is a place p1 right and there is a place p2 place p1 consists of many of the rock particles right and place p1 picked p2 consists of just one rock particle or two rock particle at max right so what happens is in this very case the amount of surface which is exposed to the air is much more than this case right so what will happen is there this region is more prone to weathering this region is more prone to mass wasting and erosion now first of all you might be having confusion between these two points what is mass wasting what is erosion see uh, do you have you heard about this two words uh, you know movement of earth and earth movement see movement of earth is say for example if uh, earth is revolving around the sun so that is the movement of earth because that is in that earth is considered as an entity but when we call earth movement then there is movement of some component within the earth right so that is what example of mass wasting Let's say for example landslide landslide is also kind of mass wasting only right but landslide is quite different from erosion because erosion happens either by fluvial agent or by aeolian agent right but mass wasting happens by the action of gravity all right so that's why there are different other surfaces which have different area per unit volume in this case in p1 wala case the area per unit volume is much more than p2 wala case right so that's why this region is more prone to weathering this region is more prone to mass wasting and it is more prone to erosion similarly the larger rocks the the total surface per area unit volume is a bit lesser than the very first case right so that's why this region is less prone to weathering and erosion and mass wasting all right so structure also has a ma major component uh, i mean uh, it is also a major factor which controls the landform development right the next process is i mean next uh, uh, factor is process all right so let's focus upon that as well process see basically various surface process actually are happening throughout the world right which further results in the formation of distinctive form of landforms say for example this is the water which is coming from the uh, you know from the lap of himalayas right so what happens is when this water is flowing from here to here then it is also eroding these regions right and this is depositing the i mean eroded particle is depositing at the foothills right which leads to the formation of alluvial fan all right and those still there are many particles which are still carried forward with these you know uh, water right and these are dropped at the mouth of the river in the ocean so in that very part in that very pa uh, mouth river right these the the carried depo uh, you know deposits by the rivers are you know deposited here right and it leads to the formation of delta 
right so that's why it has been said that in different uh, region there are distinct kind of landforms which are formed due to distinct erosional process as well as depositional process here the erosion is taking place here the deposition is taking place here also the delta region deposition is taking place Achha, can you tell that which is the biggest delta of uh, india of course that's sundarban delta all right so that was a different question anyways i mean related question only next factor which controls the landform development is time now time also plays a very important factor how my, my uh, sorry pardon pardon me sorry sorry relief now now comes relief after that it comes time right so relief how does relief uh, you know influences the landform development see say for example there are uh, we are taking two mountains one is himalayas and one is aravallis right in himalayas it is a young fold mountain it is an old mountain right if it is a young fold mountain then the elevation is much more steeper in case of himalayas than in case of aravallis right so since it is much more steeper himalayas are much more steeper it has more altitude it has more steep slopes so we have we already know that the where uh, wherever there is steep slope See, for, say for example, this is case one and this is case two. In case was there case one, there is steep slope. In case two, the slope is not that steep, right? So where the you know erosion will more more happen? It will happen here only, right? Not in this case, right? So Aravalli, see, this is the case. The one case is with Mount, uh, I mean Himalayas, right? And the second case is with Aravalli, right? So the very first. A case in which Himalayas have greater altitude, steeper slopes, the erosion rate will be much more higher and thus the denudation will also be much more higher, right? So that's why the relief feature changes much more rapid in case of Himalayas than in the case of Aravallis, right? The next factor is time. Now, how time uh, influences the landform development? This is by the example I want to show you. See, the very first case is of a volcanic mountain. The second case is of a folded mountain, right? So what happens is volcanic mountain can uh, occur within a time span of 10 to 20 years, right? If, you know, every year, you know, the volcanic is coming out, then within 10 to 20 years, this, this huge, you know, mountain will occur. But this folded mountain has taken thousands and lakhs of years to form it, right? Millions and millions of years they have taken to form these kind of, uh, you know, um, folded mountains, right? So in geographical time span, this time is much more rapid, right? Than this landform. All right, so that's why time also plays a major factor in formation of landform. Now comes the last part, which is called energy, right? So see, basically there are different land uh, factors which leads to changing, change in landform. The first factor is exogenic forces. The second factor is endogenic forces. Exogenic forces are external in nature, like water, that is uh, by the fluvial erosion, right? Uh, then uh, by the erosion of ice, glaciers then aeolian erosion so these leads to the formation uh, i mean these lead to denudation of a particular region which leads to reduction of a elevation of a particular region but in the case of endogenic force these are the internal force which happens due to igneous activities which leads to orogenesis and formation of mountains right so that's why these are forming process these are landform forming process but these are landform destruct uh, I mean, denudation processes, right? So about it, we'll read more in the very next chapter, right? So this is all about the discussion that we had for the factors controlling landform development. We have discussed it in a much holistic way, right? And uh, of course, in next chapter, we'll, uh, you know, focus upon this very topic, right? So this is all about the discussion. For more links, the descriptions, uh, I mean, the things are given in the description below. Of course, for the PDF also, you can refer the links in the description. Bye-bye, take care and thank you for listening to the whole video. Thank you very much.